Hello and welcome to another episode of the GQ How to Succeed series, a Facebook Live series here, right here on the GQ Australia Facebook page. We are in the beautiful WeWork offices here in Piedmont, the Entourage. Thanks for having us here today. Jack DeLoza couldn't make it tonight. So I'm back in the chair. My name's Hugh Humphreys and our guest tonight is Vince Frost. Very big welcome to Vince. Thanks, Hugh. How are you doing? Great, thank you. So Vince is, oh, then we're going to get into talking about design. So send through any questions you have in the Facebook Live broadcast. So we'll ask as many as possible as we can get to to Vince today. Um, he Primarily talking about that experience of design. Vince is an author and designer and I don't know, all, all the, many, many things, but I'll let him tell you a bit about that. So talk to me first about what's your background and what brought you into where you are now uh, with running the Frost, Crea Fo Frost Collective. Yeah, yeah cool. Um, well, it's a long story <laughs> before we keep it a bit We've short. got a little time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I started, I went to design school in England um, back in the 80s. Um, and I went to a design company called Pentagram for five years, decided to set up my own company, Frost Design, in 1994. Um, quite naively I went about doing it and over time it was very determined in kind of growing the business and 10 years later I came to Australia um, and then uh, brought, the, brought the business and the, merged it with another business here. Um, but I've always been very passionate about you know, design and, and designing successful outcomes and so you know my business itself has been very much a project, a design project in its own right and in, 19, sorry, in 2014 I redesigned the business to become Frost Collective and within that, we have multiple businesses, specialist businesses that support uh, what we do. Across a whole lot of different areas. So yeah. brand, you know, yeah, like strategic branding, branding yep. uh, environmental design, uh, digital, uh, virtual reality, packaging, and, and business strategy as well. So how would you describe uh, the fact that your business has been a design project or a design process over a number of years? What, is, what does that mean when you say that? Well, I guess for, for me, you know, like a lot of people going to design school, I didn't really learn about business. I wasn't great academically either. Yep. And so I just went straight into designing and I kind of like started running a business through default. And I always felt that because I didn't do an MBA or I didn't have any real business advice at the time, that I was kind of behind the eight ball with, with running a business, uh, if you know what I mean. And it was kind of like, um, you know, I realized that, you know, your life and your business and everything about your own uh, being um, could be could be approached as if it was a design project. We put so much time and energy into our clients, helping them be successful, but quite often we kind of you know we don't do the same. One doesn't do the same for You're yourself. You're thinking consciously yeah, about exactly. Yep. So you know, like for me, it's really important about getting it right. I need to design the best business to design the best outcomes for our clients. Because it's bloody hard. I mean, it's not easy. <laughs> oh, that, that's the thing, right? Yeah. You're spending all that effort and time and people's money to get their brands right and do the, all of their whole design process mm. for them. You then have to apply that to yourself. Yeah. So I guess that culminated in the book, Design Your Life, which was released... Same time, 2014. 2014 as well. Right. So what, what was the culmination of all those things that you thought, okay, I'm going to go... Was you, were you looking back and saying, I'm going to write about how I have designed my life? Or were you documenting the process of you saying, I'm going to stop and consciously reassess and say, yeah, yeah. I want to design my life. Yeah, I mean, I guess like most people, um, you know, things go well in your life and things happen positively. And sometimes things are, are not so good. You yeah. know? <laughs> and, and I guess in a way, being a, a thinker and constantly kind of thinking about how do I do it better, I just kept looking at uh, my life and realized there were certain things in relationships or my health or the way I thought about things sometimes was, was not as good as it should be. And, you know, sometimes you just keep, you know, you, you hit a wall. There's a, I think there's a question coming up where it's like, <laughs> have you ever thought about just chucking it in, jacking it in? I go, yeah, yeah often. And um, luckily, it's less often than the good things that are around running a business and doing what we do. Um, but I just felt like, for me, I kept looking, getting advice from other people. And I was trying to kind of try to offload it and thinking someone's going to come along and sort it out for me. And it, you know, I tried that many times. It just didn't seem to work. It wasn't until I actually stood up and said, well, I need to own this. Yep. I need to kind of, to, to kind of, this one's kind of on me. Um, take responsibility, work out a plan and just work out how to do it. That's something I'd been avoiding. Or it wasn't maybe, maybe not such a avoiding, but more about uh, I'm not sure how to approach things, you know, yep. in a positive way. So I guess it's so trial sense, and error, really, you know. Like what? Um, pr uh, design elements and procedures and everything. How did you go about constructing that for you to be able to say, "All right, I'm going to design my life." Yeah. See, the thing is, um, 
I've always been a yes man. <laughs> yeah. and, and some people say that's a really bad thing. Most people who, take, who give me advice say you should say no or say no more often. People say that to me all the time. I'm <laughs> the worst at this. I'm 100% a yes man too, yeah. I think it's a good thing because it, it takes you into uncomfortable places. It, it, it makes you, you know, you say, yeah, I'll do this interview. And then you get here and you go, shit, what have I said yes for? <laughs> it's been good yeah. so far. But like, I, you know, designing the, you know, creating the book, Design Your Life, I said, a publisher approached me, uh, Penguin Lantern, and I said, God, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll do it, you know? It wasn't until you could start, sit down and start to do it, then you go, shit, I've got a lot of I've got to figure out how to write a book. Yeah, how do I do it? Yeah. And um, it, it ends up being what it is due to time restraints. You know, that's, there's a cutoff point. In life and in work is different when a client comes in you take a brief, you work at a time frame, costs and all that kind of stuff. And you agree a, agree a, a kind of a deadline when you're going to deliver. Yeah. But with your life, you go, fuck it, I'll get fit next month. I'll, I'll go to the gym tomorrow. I'll, you know, tomorrow comes and you don't go and you, you know, yeah. you can procrastinate. You've got other things you to do. Exactly. You know, life happens, work stuff happens. Oh, I miss the gym again, all that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's just going you know, to don't take your life as seriously as you do your clients. And, and we spend a lot of our time working and we make other people's other people's kind of issues and problems of priority to the detriment often of our own lives. And it's not just in design, it's across all, all industries really. But I was kind of thinking around the design principles, the process we go through to solving a problem for a client, right. you can apply it to your own life. So why do you think it's so important for businesses to be creative in the way that they approach running the business and also their attitudes and values and just all of that stuff? Why do you think that kind of creativity part of design is so important for businesses? Well, I think that I mean, I think today people are, are, businesses are understanding the power of creativity and the importance of creativity and ideas. You see a lot of co-creation happening, a lot of kind of um, design thinking that's very topical and very kind of people are embracing it, you know, collectively. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just think that people today have realized the power of that and I think that um, it's a good thing for us as a business, but it's also a good thing for the world in terms of designing be a better world, designing better outcomes. Um, creativity used to kind of be seen as being kind of dropouts used to do that but the reality is that you know creativity you know design is everywhere everything around us has been designed you know apart from well it's probably a plastic plant <laughs> that, that has been designed as well but you know like anything but nature has been designed um, by somebody yeah and so I have this kind of desire to want to do it the best we possibly can to design a better world with every project that we have we have a responsibility to, to do that to make it better you know, not just get it done. To, yeah, to I've, I've, I've probably gone it. off on a, of a, on a tangent, but um, yeah, design's a really powerful tool. You got UTS uh, Business School that's embraced design thinking as part of their curriculum. Mm -hmm. So they kind of, the two together, business and design, you know, art and commerce, for example, have come together as one, which is super powerful. Yeah. It's not separate worlds like it used to be. Thinking less in silos and more. Yeah, bringing it's not together. business here, design here. It's like actually, you know, they're both on an equal, but equal and work, working together. Well, do you see that as well the same within a business that you can have your, you know, say potentially your creative elements and then also the, you know, sales elements or, you know, the less creatively driven sectors of a business, they all need to have that kind of same interconnection and yeah. thinking in the same way. And designers think differently. They think they, they're kind of right brain thinkers, whereas most kind of people in business are left, left brain. And really the combination together is whole brain thinking. Um, and you get, you know, Designers are more lateral thinking. They see opportunities where other people don't see opportunities. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just kind of, it's, it's, yeah, it's really super powerful. So I'm gonna to throw to the first question we've got from our Facebook Live broadcast. It's a question from Mike, who says, in this digital day and age, has the value and importance of classic creative design strengthened or weakened? Um, and then I guess, what are the challenges that digital is throwing those kind of creatives way? It's a big question. Yeah, I think I think it's for for me. It's like um, it's the medium is kind of irrelevant. It's almost like the you know the problem or the opportunity to solve could be applied across any medium. Yeah. And so it's not. I don't see it as old school or print versus digital. I mean, it's kind of really it's one. Um, I probably I'm not sure if I answered that question. Did I answer the question or not? Yeah. So like the has the value strengthened or weakened on that classic creative design? I think the the values. Well, I don't know what kind of traditional creative means, but in terms of uh, yeah, the digital aspect. You know, the fact that you're reading questions from an iPad. Yeah. This is being you know is live through social media. It's phenomenal. We're in a phenomenal time today, and I think that 
you know, with the, the, the kind of the um, ability to utilize that information, that data, that technology for the, for the better, for creating much more successful, much more accurate designed outcomes is, is like an all time high. It's an all time, it's a phenomenal time to be, to be doing what we do, you know. So I guess on that vein, where is it that you see businesses failing in the design process so that they're not thinking about what they're doing or uh, at what point is, you know, is, there a, is there a common is there a common place where you say okay they've done a great job with here or here or here but then they've been let down when they get to this point in you know thinking about whether it's you know their culture or their staff or how they you know how they're really going about designing everything that they do yeah I mean design like we say design is design is everything in terms of you know you can design your business design your culture design yeah. your outcomes design your space um, so where do people go wrong mostly? I think quite quite often people I'm not say wrong, but they kind of don't get it necessarily as right as it could be, is through, I, I think it was for, for myself, it wasn't until I worked out a business plan, worked out a goal, worked out a purpose. I mean, I had, my purpose was always to help people, but I, I needed to share it with, you know, we're now 55 people, I need to share with everybody, my whole business, my values, the values we have as a business, our objectives, our purpose, uh, goals, etc. cetera. Um, it's not until you kind of do that that you really understand you know, you kind of get everybody on the same page, you get everyone aligned with that, you hire to that, um, you promote your business to that, you know, you talk to your clients around that. I think the day where we used to be a, you know, design, graphic design business yeah. are, are, is kind of gone. I think a lot of people still are kind of see themselves as graphic design businesses. There is a big danger that, that they will be, um, I want to say obliterated sounds too extreme. <laughs> But we need to continue to evolve with the technology and you know, uh, how our clients add value. And with what we have today, we can design really successful outcomes. There's no excuse for not getting it right today with the information that we can kind of uh, get from, from our clients or from, from data, et cetera. And so I think that we are moving you know, to an interesting time where you can eliminate the guesswork you, you know, we're, I don't, I don't yeah. think we can sit in a meeting and say, trust us, we've done this many times before, it's worked. Yep. I think we need to back it up with data, we need to back it up with you know, proof. And, and I think that any client coming to us needs to be saying, you know, how can you prove that what you're doing is going to be success? Especially when, for example, you're saying you know, reasonably small changes that are significant, but sometimes small, you say that you know, there's value in spending all this money and going through this whole process and working yeah. out this because you can then measure it in return. Exactly, that's what we kind of brought into the mix. We got brought in a uh, customer experience strategist, we behavior economics guys, you know, people who are really understanding people. Uh, and, and again, it kind of sounds funny, but you know, for a long time there, we were designing for our clients, our clients' right. approval. The yeah. marketing director would brief us and we kind of do all we can to make them happy with their solution. It might have been very successful in the market with a particular kind of the, the customer, or it might not have been. It wasn't our objective to focus on the customer. Yeah. Ironically, it kind of sounds crazy, but I think a lot of people, a lot of design companies work, have been working that way as well. Like say designing for design's sake, as opposed to designing with an yeah. actual, you know, an actual person outcome in mind. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to slag off design awards, but a lot, <laughs> lot of us were doing, desi were winning design awards, and that's the way that we proved that we were successful or valuable to our clients. Right. But the reality is, most of the awards, although we enter them still. And they're, they're the good part of our, our design world are judged by other designers, you know. So it's, it's not necessarily judged. It's not judged by a, a customer or a client. Um, I'm kind of going off a tangent, but I think we're getting to the pointy end of business today, uh, due, you know, due to technology changes and abundance of, uh, of of information that we can utilize. I kind of call it the science of design. It's the science of design right. is going to become an all-time high for us and, and, and critical part of what we do. Well, I mean, I, I kind of the disruption is yeah. um, That's a word something often, people often yeah, used, people yeah. talk about it a lot, and you know it does my head in as, <laughs> as, it, as it would. Um, for a long time, we were able to do what we did, and we we're comfortable doing that, and we had momentum around that. And then the last couple of years, it's becoming changing so much that you just kind of, in a way, didn't know where to where to go with it, where to put your you know I'm, you know put your money. So okay, we believe in this, and this is what we're going to do. Yeah. You got to continually keep changing and reinventing yourself to stay relevant and that is, that's, I don't think that's gonna go, gonna go away. I think it's gonna come more and more frequently that we need to just be that's totally in tune with that. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we've been focusing on in this How to Succeed business is aimed at people who either run their own business or are working for someone and are thinking about starting a business or have ideas, you know, entrepreneurs in that whole sense. So I guess why is it important that 
if you're okay so if, if a lot of the times people think of design in you know arts and creative and entertainment and architecture kind of fields but why is it important that if you're running any kind of business whether it's you know a retail business or selling a product or a service anything like that that you should be thinking about how to design all those key elements that you were talking about like culture you know space branding all of that stuff mm. why should everyone be thinking about that not just if you're you know pigeonholed in one of the more creative type industries yeah I, th I think that we've got to think about businesses as being living entities not just being something you design and fix and leave alone and kind of a, you know templated or whatever yeah that it's continually being kind of you need to continue to look at how that evolves as a business you can be very agile with that and look look at you know what's working in terms of you know what you're designing or you know you know your you know your business or your you know how you touch the customer you can learn from that experience and that interaction um, and, and continue to evolve with that. So I think that um, design, yeah, as I said, design, design is uh, powerful and a critical part of um, any business. And I think that that's where, uh, I think people got to kind of, you know, people in business need to accept, accept that, that the design, uh, that it can always be better and that, that they it's can... Never that, game, yeah, yeah. It's never any game. Yeah, it's never any game. And there's nothing wrong with... I think there, people talk about failure as well. And the fact that, you know, don't get, you know, pissed off or fed up, you know. Um, if... If, um, if a nice one... Phone's ringing. <laughs> yeah. Nice one, Prav. Um, <laughs> that, that, you know, not... To, I mean, people do get quite depressed when they don't get it right, or they think that the grass is always green, yep. and they think someone else is but doing it better than them. And yeah. first time only, and you don't get another opportunity Yeah, it's just only got to keep chipping away at it, you know, learn that it's something, well, thank, thank God, that's something you could actually come back to and go, you know what, that didn't work, or that could have been yeah. better. Yeah. Um, don't be so proud also to think about the fact that, you know, some people used to say to me, oh, you know, um, well, you know, uh, this is how I'm going to do it. I've had, you know, 30 years of doing it. I'm not going to be questioned, all that kind of stuff. But that doesn't, that doesn't stand up today. And you really got to keep kind of chipping yeah. away at it. And, um, and uh, in a way, I think it's really exciting for me. It's like, I'd be bored shitless if, if, <laughs> if this... You were stuck doing Yeah, it. I was stuck yeah. doing the same thing I was doing 20 years ago. Yeah. Thank God things are changing. And thank God I say yes, because it takes me, to, me and the business to new territories where you're continually learning. And that learning, and that, I guess in a way, that designs, designer's inquisitiveness um, really does open up new opportunities and new doors and new ways of thinking as well. So as I was reading up a little bit about you and your background and, and Frost Collective, you've mentioned or you talked a fair bit about the word designing success. How do you think that people should approach that if, you know, in regards to what they see as success, you know, it's success is usually the end goal of, of this journey. But if you're designing to hit that point, like what should be the things you're looking out for along the way? Well, the thing that we always say, and something we brought in a while ago, is asking our clients from the very beginning when they give us a brief, what does success look like for them? Right. You know, what are because it's not just kind of because used to be just kind of take a brief. Here's a problem. You know, try Do to work it, it out. It, you know, it's done. Yeah, yeah, it's done. But now we go, okay, you know, what does this success look like? What will be the ultimate outcome from doing this, you know? And it might mean that the brief they, they're going to give us is not actually going to achieve that. So we question that, we dig deep into that, yep. maybe rewrite the brief. But we certainly spend a lot of time focusing on creating that successful outcome. That's our objective. It's not about making a nice thing or a nice aesthetically pleasing thing or doing it for ourselves. Yeah, if it has no functional value. Yeah, exactly. And I want us to get better and better if we can get it 100% right, that would be the ultimate, you know, you know and why, why not? Why can I miss the target? You know, why not? Yeah. Why get it slightly short of that? I mean, if you can reach that target, which is, a, you know, creating a successful outcome, that's what's really important. And I think the same thing for us as a business or any business is that you can keep, keep working at improving on that to create, you know, what you have perceived as being a successful outcome. So talk me through a little bit about the formation of Frost Collective, the, re the process of um, bringing your existing business and kind of expanding it to different streams, or I guess as you call it, different yeah. e existing businesses that all sit under the Frost Collective umbrella. How did you go about bringing them in and collaborating in that way? And what was the, the thinking behind getting to that point? Yeah, so kind of the thinking went way back. So 
Um, I know when I was at uh, high school back in England, uh, it was the end of the sixth, sixth form, and the careers advisor says, hey, Vince, you know, you're next uh, in line. Um, you know, <laughs> out of, Work out you your know, life. Yeah, what do you want to do yeah. for the rest of your life? And I'm going, I have no idea. And I was really intimidated by that because it seemed like everybody else around me knew what they were going to do, whether they're going to join the army or go into business or whatever they might want to do. And I was just like going, I have no idea. You know, this is a Friday. And they said, OK, by Monday, can you come back? You know, so I had a hell of a weekend, you know, getting more and more petrified by the idea that I have no friggin idea what I wanted to do. Yeah. And so I kind of went back and I kind of said, I, I know I kind of I think I avoided the meeting the careers officer again. Um, and I kind of, and then I went to art school, and I did a thing which was like a foundation course. And in that year, you did kind of graphic design, fashion, textiles, product design, uh, AV, yep. uh, a whole array of stuff. And at the end of that, they said, "Which one do you want to do?" You know. And again, I kind of felt like, <laughs> "Shit, I actually like all of this." You know. So why for do I have me, to pick? Yeah. yeah, what I have to pick? And kind of, I like being a generalist. You know. And so when I started Frost Design had very much that approach about being a generalist. We can do anything. That was my feeling. And it's not about being arrogant, but I believe that with the right kind of focus, you, you can achieve far more than you think you can. And um, when I came to Australia, and, and we kind of, uh, you know, Frost Design was, was growing, it became, as a business, by being Frost Design, by being one entity, it was a whole bunch of you know, we're, one minute we're doing packaging, then we're doing branding, then yeah. environmental design, wayfinding. A lot of diverse stuff, especially yeah. when you are a generalist, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I was very much working in the business as the creative director as well. Probably working more in the business creative director than I was as the CEO. I was kind of CEO by default, even though I owned the business, I wasn't yep. act, acting as an owner of a business. I was acting much more as a, as a creative director, and every day was chaos. I'm kind of, get, I'm going to get to the point. Um, <laughs> but that kind of chaos was also exciting this kind of is kind of kind of there's you know there's good things come out of that the chances yeah. that happen by things bumping into each other and you being stretched to breaking point but it got to the point where the business was growing and it actually was you know being hindered by not having hierarchy not having kind of I guess um, structure necessarily in the business in those different fields yeah that you and were me looking at, being yeah. consumed by the business not working on the business and not having a clear vision of what I wanted to achieve and so I sat down and I kind of started to, you know, talk to various people. I got a business coach who I work with online uh, once a week. And she helped me kind of, you know, put together a plan, even though it kind of, you know, it was left brain thinking, which really hurt. And my, <laughs> my head was pounding from trying to shift uh, over the traditional there. way of thinking. Yeah, and, and, and kind of shift from kind of a lifetime of, of working a certain way, rethinking, re kind of channeling myself. And then it kind of came, worked out that, at the time, I guess 50% of our Frost Design business was doing environmental design. So what I thought was we'd read as, take that chunk of what we're doing in there, take it out, name it Urbanite as, as, the, as the brand, put my, my partner, Carlo uh, Gianasco, was um, you know, uh, head of that business up and has now grown substantially. It's been very, very successful. He's done a phenomenal job and, you know, amazing to see him also, you know, go from being designer, design director to be actually a owner to yeah. be a leader of a business and just seeing that progression is phenomenal kind of gives me it sounds silly but it gives me goosebumps even talking about it because i'm just very proud of what he's he's achieved same thing with the nest we're doing digital work so we actually looked at acquiring a digital small digital business mm -hmm. and we got ahead of that business and and, and that's growing um recent one is jack which is our mindful packaging business and um, got a head of that called Lisa, and she's you know busily kind of working on new business opportunities and growing that business. Um, we got also um, Pivot, which is a recent business we started three months ago. Very uh, new business, business strategy business, and it's and it's really really cool to see to see people thriving under these individual brands. They're specialists in their in uh, as a team, uh, yeah. but collectively, we're all in, under one roof. Collectively, we're all you still do together. everything. You know what I mean? Like you can still do anything in that umbrella, but yeah. you can still specialize a little bit within that. In we totally niche. can. I mean, the, and and the brands themselves attract business in their own right, and the Frost yeah. Collective attracts work as well. So it's a, it's a multiple ways into the business. If you just want to come in for environmental work, you come into Urbanite. If you want to come into some companies, come into the whole to do three sixty. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I guess on that, like, there's a question that we've had um, from 
come online from Keely, who says that Frost has been able to secure some really great partnerships and great clients with some big business, for example, Woolworths. Um, so what are your top tips for securing some strategic partners like that and you know, winning those high profile clients? Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of those projects, they don't necessarily just come, in through, come through the door. Um, they come through years and years of networking, uh, meeting people. I mean, this does, this does, this is the other side of business is that, you know, you just can't be complacent just thinking that you're going to be inundated with opportunities. Yeah. Opportunities come through the door, um, but you have to be continually being entrepreneurial, uh, continue thinking about, you know, um, you know, you know wh where's your next project coming from? Yeah. And that kind of um, chipping away at that and I guess, you know, a determination of connecting with the right people to create the opportunities. And, you know, it is a lot of effort and takes a lot of time. Um, a project like Woolworths, when we refreshed that brand, um, was incredibly exciting. I saw what you did dropping the name Fresh in there. <laughs> yes, that, was, that wasn't even intentional. <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was a real honor and a real, uh, and again, a real obligation. Amazing CEO, you know, Brad Benucci is an amazing guy that we worked with previously when he was at um, Seller Masters and then at Woolworths Liquor Group. So we kind of worked with him as he went through and grew, he kind of grew up within within the company. So those relationships, yeah, relationships, last, absolutely. Ongoing. I get jobs today that that you know, uh, from a relationship that could be twenty years ago, you know. So the very first job you did is still having a knock on effect to your business. Further you know, down people the still line. see it. That people still, like that reputation that you yeah. hold and everything that you have in that. Could be through uh, someone who knows somebody. Could be through seeing it, you know, project online or in a book or wherever it might be, you know. So it's like. That's why it's so important for me that every single job that we do, we do it to our best ability because it has a positive knock-on effect to our future yeah. and to the people who are engaging with that product. Yeah. Some companies just kind of do the work. Some people just say, oh, we do bread and butter work. That's the bulk of our work. We just do it and we don't kind of show anybody. That's a terrible crime, I think, because actually what you're doing is actually not, you're kind of not helping yourself in the long run because you're just doing it for for the money yep. and not for the the, the kind the of the value that comes yeah, from the, the building success. those relationships and sustaining that success exactly yeah so all that networking being clear about your business plan where you want to go is really important think of yourself as being an indiv in an individual you're not we're not all the same we're all different in some way um, you know don't copy someone else's business or someone else's plan we'll try to work out try to personalize it for yourself you know for me, I know when I was designing my life, I kind of stopped drinking alcohol. I'm now a vegetarian, I'm still a little bit overweight. <laughs> but you know, I'm kind of like doing the things that work for me through trying it and testing it and see if it works and then committing to it. You know, it's taken a lifetime of kind of trial so and error to, to, work, to yeah. work it out. You yeah. know? Maybe it's, a lot of it is about time. You know, a lot of it's about time. You know, I'm 52 now. It's kind of, I've, I know a lot, hell of a lot more now than I did when I was starting out when I was 27, you know? Yeah. Well, another question from uh, Giuseppe has come through saying, has the amount you wanted your business to grow ever changed? So would you have been satisfied, you know, just running a smaller agency that was successful or have you always had bigger ambitions like this? Um, I mean, it sounds to me, like for me, it's not about, it's not about size. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a size queen. <laughs> um, it's, it's not about that. It's more about um, growing growing with the opportunities that come our way and growing our skill set in in response to what the market's needing so by saying yes it, you have to you have to expand you either partner with people or bring people in so you never thought say 20 years ago that you had a vision of having 50 staff and you'd be working in sydney and having five different brands at no, the time no i mean that that yeah, I mean, when I started, I had no idea I'd ever come to Australia. <laughs> um, but I never knew really how big I wanted to, how big to, to grow it, because it's busy doing the work. You know, I guess in a way, the business has grown through, through attracting opportunities. And we, I have to say, I'm not selective. I don't say, no, we're not going to do that job. There's been a handful of jobs that come through the business in 20 X years that we said no to, and they could either be an ammunition business or a tobacco company or whatever it might be. We're doing it for moral reasons, not because of we believe we can kind of help them. Yeah. And so that kind of, I guess, saying yes to things, uh, finding a way through to create a successful outcome has had a positive knock-on effect. Um, I mean, I have to say, it's, it's, no, it's not been easy at all. 
you know, I would probably, if I hadn't done this career, I would have a full head of hair uh, <laughs> today. But like, it, it's been, yeah, it's, it's, it's incredibly challenging. I'm sure that it's interesting when you get to meet people like famous actors or musicians or whatever, and they look like they're, they're minted and they're happy and they got everything worked out, but often they're the ones that are having the worst troubles. You know? Yeah. They're, they're not, you know, you always think that someone's got it better than you. The key thing is they're gonna do it right for you. You know, and it might not be, for some people it might be being a, an individual designer or a consultant and, and working from home or whatever it might be, or working yep. in we work type environment, you know. And sometimes people don't have, don't have the ambition to grow. I don't think I had an ambition to actually, I wanted to grow as a person. And once I started employing people, I wanted to actually help others thrive. I want others to, to reach their potential. And so creating a culture where they're kind of taken care of and they're nurtured and they're exposed to opportunities that they can then be challenged to as well, you know, support them. That's what I really like, that cultural side of things. Well, so I guess then corresponding to that, the question we sort of touched on very early answer. on. No, no, no. Yeah. So what we touched on earlier was the question from Chris about um, have you ever got to the point where you thought you should just throw it all in and do something different or go and work with someone else? Like, especially perhaps in the early stage, what, we, what was your thinking then when you thought this is not necessarily going to plan, this isn't going the way you wanted it to, it's you know, bloody hard work. Hmm. At what point did you, have you thought seriously about turning it in and then what's made you stick it out? Yeah, I mean, I've done that in the past. I've worked for, I went to Japan uh, in 2000 and I was a creative director of Japanese Vogue, uh, which hadn't launched that at that time. I lasted nine months there and I got fired <laughs> in the end. It was hell when it was painful and it should have right. been really great, but I said yes to the wrong thing. Uh, because of money, because of the glamour of the location and wearing nice suits and stuff like that. <laughs> but I really, Easy things I, to get sucked into. Yeah, absolutely. And it was kind of the allure of that was very appealing. Um, I feel like, you know, you, I learned from that. I learned that that's something I, I kind of went too far. I said yes to the thing that probably I should have done a bit more research around. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, what was, it, what was it, the back of the question? That, like, um, what made you want to, what made you then turn oh, around and oh stick yeah. it out? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I think even like this weekend, I even had thoughts of going, fuck. I just came back <laughs> like, from Byron. Yeah. I just came back from Byron with the kids. I drove back, you know, 11 hour drive and kind of get back and go, oh God, I gotta go to work on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of like, you know, I kind of beat myself up thinking that because I know when I walk through the door, you know, actually the people are great. There's opportunities, opportunities to work on. Meet and you enjoy people. the work. And, yeah, yeah. And being, I, I guess in a way, I, I was in the past a really big procrastinator and left alone in, the, in a field or something, I'd be a procrastinator again. When yeah. I'm in a busy environment, when, it, when I've been told I've got to go this meeting, that meeting, do this and that, I, 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 it, there's, no room for, there's no room for procrastination. There's no room for me to stop and overthink things and get worried about it. And, you know, so keep you've got busy. people knocking on your door all the time, yeah. needing decisions about stuff. Yeah, yeah keep them busy, keeps me, keeps me focused and distracted from myself in a way. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So I guess... That's why I stopped drinking as well. <laughs> <laughs> For more focus, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, um, we, we don't have much more time, but I wanted to ask you one question about um, how do you find the time, I guess, to manage to do all this? You're running, you know, owning these kind of five different brands that sit under the Frost Collective. Yeah. You've written a book. You're out, you know, doing new talks and kind of speak a little bit on the circuit in that way as well. Yeah, How have you been kids, able to? Two yeah, dogs. yeah, exactly. Three. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, How yeah. do you construct and design your life in that sense so that you have enough time to do all of this stuff without detracting from, you know, either the the job or the family or the home life or any of that without being able to take away from what you want to invest your time in? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do like being busy. I do like being stretched. You know. Um, uh, I don't know, as a kid, I was always running, um, doing things as fast and accurately as I possibly could. I don't know why I'm like that. I don't know why. <laughs> I've talked to people about it. They don't know why either. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I know, and there's, there's a whole bunch of self-initiated projects I'm doing in property developments and, and other things, other businesses, other brands. I don't know, I just like have a head full of ideas and ideas that I feel with my heart and I feel that are intuitively uh, right to do. I mean, if you're, you kind of, I spent my life kind of um, thinking of ideas for other people, it helps kind of strengthen your, 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 your thinking muscle, your ideas muscle, and you just can't turn it off. I can't switch that off. I'm constantly thinking about, okay, uh, something I see something, I think about how it could be better or a new, a new idea, a new business or whatever it might be. So I think I feel like 
I don't, um, I can't see myself stopping that. I think I want to utilize that um, to f its full potential, really. But there, you know, if question, there are absolutely days when you go, fuck this. Yeah. I can't do this anymore. Yeah. You can have it. Give me, <laughs> give me five bucks, you can have the business. Um, but, you know, as I said before, can you realize the potential in the business? And, you know, I'm in business generally to help people, help people. And I feel like I have an obligation. The business has the capacity and capability to really help people. And that's what's really exciting. Great. Well, thanks so much, Vince Frost, for joining us tonight on the GQ How to Succeed series on Facebook Live. We'll be back in a couple of weeks with Jack Delosa, so stay tuned. Thanks again for watching and participating and sending in all your questions as well. Um, we'll see you next time.